Before I get into today's news video where we got five really big stories, I want to remind you of a giveaway we have going on right now. We're going to be giving away a replica Hylian shield, not one, but two Nintendo Switch Zelda OLED editions. Also, not one, but two Zelda Collector's Editions as well. Now, to enter that giveaway, all you have to do is head down to the pinned comment or the link in the description. And I wish all you guys luck. This is a kickoff giveaway for our Prime Gaming Fest 2023, which begins on June 8th. We'll have details on that later, but you can go ahead and enter this giveaway now. Also, we're on our road to 133,000 subscribers, so I'd appreciate it if you would go ahead and hit that like button, maybe hit the bell to get notified of all videos and live streams. And you know what? Let's get into this video. <laughs> Our first story today deals with a sales update in France. We actually did an individual video on a sales update in the UK, not realizing we might get more sales data today. So I wanted to throw the French sales data in here because it's quite impressive. So this was announced and yeah, we got it off Nintendo everything. And it says 500,000 units were sold physically in France. This is not only beating out games like Scarlet and Violet physically, it's also beating out Red Dead Redemption 2, the latest FIFA games. Oh, and by the way, this is the biggest, fastest selling game in Nintendo history in France. So, wow. In the UK, it actually was a little bit behind Scarlet and Violet. Here it's ahead. It makes you wonder if it's ahead of Scarlet and Violet in more and more territories, is it possible that Tears of the Kingdom is the fastest selling Nintendo game of all time, even counting Scarlet and Violet. I don't know. It's interesting to think about. All I know is I'm really, really having a lot of fun with this game. So I want to get through this video so I can get back to playing myself. So another Cheers of the Kingdom related story here we have comes from Amazon of all places because <coughs> remember those hoary accessories we announced that were coming to Japan only a couple of weeks ago? Well, it looks like the hoary split pad Tears of the Kingdom edition is now available to pre-order right now. We got a pre-order link down in the description for you guys. Uh, it's gonna be costing $59.99. It says it releases by the end of August. I do gotta say these split pads look pretty solid. The left one looks really good. The right one's more of the classic, you know, art, like, you know, this collector's edition steel art thing. It's more kind of like this, but still guys, I'm really excited about this. I know that I really want these uh, split pad pros just as an option, so, Hey, who knows? Maybe we pick some up and we check them out ourselves this August. Now we have some updates on the Super Mario Bros. movie because we got two big things happening. One, it is officially now the fourth highest grossing animated film of all time at the box office at $1.21 billion in box office revenue. Absolutely incredible and it's still available at many movie theaters right now so it could climb even higher and get into the top three. But here's the thing. It's going to be interesting to see how much higher it continues to climb because starting tomorrow, it has been officially announced that you will be able to buy slash rent Mario Brothers at home. So that's right, late tonight slash tomorrow, you will be able to rent or buy the movie. Now they said it will be available anywhere that Universal movies are currently available to buy and rent. So through your Amazon Prime, right, you can you can buy and rent the movie there. Uh, probably buy and rent it through your cable providers like, you know, Charter or DirecTV, Dish Network, etc. cetera. Uh, maybe AT&T's TV service, all those stuff where they sell and rent movies that have Universal movies, you should be able to get the Mario movie there. It's not gonna be available for like streaming as part of a subscription right now. They they haven't announced a date when that would happen. It's likely going to go to Peacock first, if I had to guess. But again, we don't know when that's going to happen because the date hasn't been announced for that. They did announce along with this, so there will be a physical version. So we are going to get Blu-rays and DVDs and all that, but they don't have a release date at this time, just that it's going to be later. The only confirmed store that's going to have it for sure is Best Buy, but I would be surprised if pretty much all retailers that still carry DVDs and Blu-rays have it, such as like Walmart and Target. So yeah, just going to have to keep our ears to the ground for a physical version, but Hey, you know what? We'll see how the box office continues to perform now that people can just get it in the comfort of their own homes. And that leads to our next story. And that is dealing with Hogwarts Legacy. So look, Hogwarts Legacy was supposed to come out on July 25th of this year for Nintendo Switch, a few months after it came out on every other platform. There was a bit of a split release of like current gen, then old gen, and the Switch was supposed to be last. 
Well, it has now been delayed, and they put this announcement up on Twitter, stating Hogwarts Legacy launches on Switch on November 14th, 2023. We know fans are looking forward to playing on Switch, therefore creating the best possible experience is a top priority. Thank you for your patience. So this is actually the second delay of the Switch version, and it does make it really feel like we're getting a native version of the game because you wouldn't keep delaying a cloud version. So at this point, it is kind of neat that they are working on a native version, and we have something we got to talk about with that release date. But before we do, we need to remember that they're actually excited about the Switch version, as this came from Troy Johnson, a designer of the game, who said something in an interview back in February. And here is what he said in regards to the Switch version. He said, the Switch version is going to be awesome. It sure will be. We are doing everything in our power to make sure that each version is beautiful, that it is well optimized, and above all that, it is faithful to the idea we had for the title. And in the end, it will be exactly the title we want. So they are just trying to make sure that Hogwarts Legacy lives up to the reputation that it has garnered on all the other platforms of being a really fantastic game, one of the best games of this year. Not quite as high as Tears of the Kingdom, but still a really good game, and I'm looking forward and very curious how the Switch version is going to run. And now, the fact that it's coming out in November might lead you to think about a potential new Nintendo system, and our last story deals with that because we have a couple updates on Nintendo's next generation system. First, Nintendo Shintura Farukawa, the president of Nintendo, actually talked about the next generation system in their investors Q&A. Let's go ahead and read what happened over there. So the question came in, it was question four of the Q&A, and said the number of annual playing user for Nintendo Switch is continuing to rise even as we enter its seventh year since launch. So from that perspective, I feel that is a possibility to say that there is less of a need to release a next generation platform. When you do release a next gen platform, do you foresee a dramatic increase in the number of annual playing users, or will you maintain it at a level of at least 100 million users? Furukawa responds and states, the growth in annual playing users has become more gradual compared to three or four years ago, and going forward, we expect to be at a point where we prioritize maintaining high engagement while also able to invite new users. Gaming system operation tends to fluctuate based on the release timing of major titles, so we will continue to release a steady flow of software. We also believe that we need to keep providing opportunities for consumers to play Nintendo Switch rather than relying solely on new software releases. We do not believe that reaching a certain number of annual playing users means that there is no need to release a next generation platform. I cannot say anything specific about a next generation platform at this time, but we are always working on various projects aimed at the future by asking ourselves what kind of fun proposal we can make which can possibly provide a new and unique entertainment. And in the case of future Nintendo releases, hardware releases that is, the annual playing users will largely depend on how widely the hardware is adapted. From that standpoint as well, we believe that how we maintain a high level of consumers actively playing Nintendo dedicated video game platforms while transitioning to the next generation of hardware will be a very important topic going forward. However, at this stage, we believe that our top priorities are maintaining and expanding the utilization of Nintendo Switch, which has entered its seventh year since launch, and maintaining business momentum. Now that's some really cool, neat information coming out of Nintendo from Furukawa, and honestly, it makes a lot of sense what he's doing and what he's saying here. In the end, he's just saying, hey, look, we have a lot of active users, but we don't see there being like a number that triggers us to transition, whether it's dipping or rising. What he does know, though, is that they do think the transition is very important. They want to make sure they get it right. And he's basically not going to reveal anything right now about the new hardware, but that doesn't mean we're done talking about new hardware because... Would you believe it? A Bloomberg article came out, and honestly, they're not making stuff up here. This isn't like some private source they have. This was a public investor's call from Sharp, and something very interesting happened in the investor's call, and it's happened since that investor's call that basically tells us we are getting new hardware. It's coming soon, whether it's this year or next year. It's within 2023 or 2024. Look, let's get into this and actually read the article a little bit, or at least the notes down. And it says, beyond this, Sharp has announced they are working or have been working on new LCD technology for an upcoming video game system. They said this during an earnings release call. 
They stated plainly that they will begin making production lines for this panel for the new system this year. Now, notably, Sharp is owned by Foxconn and has worked with Nintendo in the past on Nintendo Switch. Of course, after the stories broke and before they released their documentation publicly, they scrubbed all of the mentions out of the slides. So people were looking for the slides. You know, hey, here's our public release of slides. Here's the PDF. And the slides they actually saw with this information in the investor's call were erased. So that's quite interesting. And while they didn't mention Nintendo, the fact the story broke originally as being for Nintendo and then they scrubbed the files, it does heavily suggest they gave too many identifying information in the call. Of course, being a company that worked on screens for the original Switch and mentioning screens for a new game system, it's pretty easy to put two and two together. Now note this does mean an LCD panel for the new system versus the superior OLED screen in the Switch OLED. However, it is a newer LCD technology and likely cheaper to make than the current OLED panels. So if they do use LCDs, this is probably to drive down costs of the new system at launch as they would use OLEDs as the new XL model driver for platforms moving forward. Now, notably, this would suggest that, hey, we're not going to be getting these this platform in 2023 because if the manufacturing lines are opening later this year, they're not in mass production now, there's no way they could do a holiday launch. Of course, Nintendo technically has multiple partners, or at least they did for Switch, on their screens. So they could have a completely different manufacturer, such as Samsung, who's making their OLED panels, already pumping out screens for the new system and have it be LCD technology, and that these are just additional manufacturing lines coming in to ramp up production of the new system as it starts to sell so they can continue to meet demand after launch. So in other words, we don't really know what this means for when the Switch is coming, other than if they confirm manufacturing lines, at this point, it's either this year or next year. There's really no in-between, and it's probably looking like holiday or holiday, right? It's either holiday 2023, holiday 2024. That's what we have it narrowed down to. If we get to 2025 without a new system, then I would be really shocked at this point. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.